A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain and raised above the hills. All nations shall stream toward it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways, and we may walk in his paths. For from Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and impose terms on many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not raise the sword against another, nor shall they train for war again. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> well, what are you doing for Advent? How are you preparing for Jesus? Sort of a maybe common thought nowadays, more common during Lent, but still something that you think about, well, what are you doing for Advent? And then all four spiritual practices, fasting, prayer, eggnog, these are all <laughs> very valid ways to prepare for the coming of the Lord. But what I want to touch on today is what is our most basic de desire? What is our basic motivation in preparing for Advent? And I think if we look at this reading, we can sort of see what is the setup for us, for all of Advent. It isn't about doing. Come, let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways, and we may walk in his paths. And I think the interesting thing about this passage is that the walking in the paths and the being instructed by the Lord comes after the decision, let us climb the mountain. Let us go up to the house of the God of Jacob. That comes first. And only after that do we actually get closer to God. And I think this has sort of a good Thomistic grounding too. St. Thomas says that what is primary in the order of intention is last in the order of execution. And basically what he means by that is that in any sort of project, the ultimate goal, what causes us to do anything, is the last thing that actually gets done. So if your goal is to deliver presents to all the good little boys and girls on Christmas Eve night, that's your ultimate goal. But you first need to hire some elves, and you need to build a sleigh, and you need to feed the reindeer, and you need to get the workshop up and running. All those things come before you actually get to fulfill your ultimate desire of giving presents to the good boys and girls. So how does this apply to Advent? On this first Sunday, when we begin to look forward to Christmas, when we begin the liturgical year, what can we learn from this, the importance of desire? And so I, I thought it might be good to turn to that great treasure trove of inspirational spiritual <coughs> writing, the Code of Canon Law. <laughs> and in uh, Canon 663, it says, the first and foremost duty of all religious is to is the contemplation of divine things and assiduous union with God in prayer. That's the general, ultimate goal that we should have. <coughs> How do we apply that to this season? And what I would basically offer all of you, my brothers, is as we look forward to Christmas, fasting, prayer, all these things are good, and we should do them. But today, for this weekend, when we look forward to the coming of Christ, let us cultivate that basic desire to be with Christ. I want to see Jesus at Christmas. I want that hope. I want to look forward to his birth, to have that joy in my heart. Mary's getting pretty big. Oh boy, he's almost here. <laughs> When I was growing up as a kid, I think most of you probably experienced this as well, you know, I always looked forward to Christmas, not because I really cared too much about the baby Jesus, but I was looking forward to the presents. And this anxiety, this waiting for the presents, sort of pervaded the whole season. You know, it was like the, the Advent week was a little instrument of torture invented by the church, you know, to keep telling us how slowly we're actually getting it. It was this intense desire for the day to come. And I think that should animate our lives as well. 
So as we cultivate this desire, let that animate our additional prayer, our fasting, our spiritual reading, the kindnesses we do for one another, the gifts we give. That should be at the root of everything that we do. And so we can say, as we hear in Isaiah, Come, let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways, and we may walk in his paths. Amen. Mm -hmm.